I think some of the best ones I see almost as overtures, you know, it, it, it sets the tone for the whole record, you know. This episode is being supported by Audio Movers, whose Listen To plugin has been a game changer for us at Take Notes. Get a month's free trial with the link in the description below. I really love openings of albums, you know. I, I think I've been trying to write my Baba O'Reilly, you know, for my whole life. You know, that's like the way I see a record starting, right? And um, I totally forgot, but my very first iteration, because, um, you know, Fall Out Boy doesn't get to do, just as a function of, I think, the way we came up, we don't really tend to do a lot of fun guitar stuff. And um, so I really wanted to do something guitar present. So uh, I don't know, Neil, if you want to play my first pass. Sure. I'll play just uh, a little bit of the intro, essentially. I'm excited. So a very different intro. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, instantly, you know, I, I played it for the band, I played it for Neil, I played it for management, and unanimously everyone was like, we love it, except the intro, obviously. <laughs> um, and, uh, and I was like, okay, uh, you know, um, no problem. And then I was like, well, what else did I want to do? Uh, what else was I, have I always wanted to do? So I was like, okay. One thing that I always wanted to do, and I tried on Foley and it never happened, was a piano phase. Um, uh, you know, I like guess Steve Reich piano phase, where um, you have a you have a, a loop of a, a looped phrase um, that's playing at the same time in multiple different tempos. If I'm playing a piano line at 120, and then I play the same line at 121, and then I play the same line at 120. Two and, and the same line at 123, and I start them at the same time. For the first few bars, they'll be relatively in sync, right? And it'll sound kind of normal. By the end of the second bar, you'll start to notice some of them are lagging, right? By the, you know, 17th bar, you start to get these really cacophonous, strange sounds. There are these moments in the in there. It's, it's really hypnotic. It does all these weird sonic um, kind of almost illusions and things where you hear, you hear sounds that aren't there and stuff. You hear, you know, almost drum sounds and things or, or you hear bass frequencies that aren't there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it starts off in unison. It can, goes anywhere between kind of comb filtering and, mm -hmm. and actual uh, delays that you can hear. Um, but it's not, there's no effects on it. It's just the, the, the sections that Patrick chose to put together. I, mean, I think we need to hear some of these pianos then. <laughs> so yeah, I can play a little bit of the, just the piano so you can kind of hear where it, how it evolves. So around here, I'm jumping ahead to, to a much further section of it. Um, I always loved phases as a, as a thing. I always found them very fascinating. So I was like, I want to, I would kill to have one on a Fall Out Boy record. And this was my little way of getting it on there. <laughs> so what should we listen to next that would help explain well, what you did? I mean, I have your original demo or the, la the okay. latest version of the demo. Yeah, with the, okay, so we can play. play that and you can kind of see what, to what degree I, I had built up the, the orchestra. Yeah. And when you're doing this, how, how do you do it? You know, in terms of instrumentation, are you using, you know, since that yeah so i'm mostly in, i'm mostly in like contact instruments um and oh we took that out we didn't like that uh low bass note but uh yeah so i'm mostly in contact instruments um i tend to play everything individually so like that one trumpet line was one pass of me playing it all you know the cello is one pass the bass is one pass. i'm not doing like a synth pad i kind of but anyway you can see it's pretty it's pretty close to what we what we yeah. hear in the in the finished. Um, yeah. By the way, to toot Patrick's horn, his this arrangement is incredible, and I do I do think it's worth listening to the whole 
thing in solo, the strings and the horns together, just to get an idea of all the voice leading and harmony that he's doing. It's really, it's pretty amazing. Thanks, Neil. Spirits of Collaboration, I want to tell you a bit more about Listen To by Audio Movers. It's the plugin we use for all our remote sessions here at Take Notes. It allows you to stream your audio in real time, directly from your door to anyone, anywhere in the world, and all in pristine quality. And we're not alone. It's being used on projects by some of the biggest names in the industry. Everyone from Taylor Swift to Lil Nas X to Bring Me The Horizon. And we have a special offer for you. One month's free trial instead of the usual two days. Just visit audiomovers.com and use the promo code TAKENOTES1 at checkout to get your free month and see what the fuss is all about. So we had, I can solo a few of the instruments. So we had the, the drums, kind of rock roomy drums. I love that kick. And then we got bass. One of the things on the intro, I know I added some reverb to the guitar stabs just to give them a little length, a little room, and then the guitar octave part that um, Joe played. Really cool contrary motion going on there between the guitars. The, the, the octave guitar is coming down the scale and the, and the rhythms are going up. So you get that kind of cool contrary motion. I mean, that's really all that's playing. It sounds big uh, for that intro, but that's kind of everything. Between that and the orchestra, there's a lot. If you're listening to the guitar and the orchestra, there, there's a lot of information. And then in the verse, uh, I think we're coming down to oh, a single guitar here. Oh, there's also an acoustic doubling. I'm trying to remember how we did that. I don't have anything listed for the pedal, but I know it was a Strat going through an mm -hmm. orange amp. Yeah, it was One of the things strat, I, do, yeah. I do recall is if you listen to just the riff here, So we had those little reverb splashes to accent those high notes and it kind of brought it in stereo and a little bit more otherworldly. I guess when I talk about album intros, I think some of the best ones I see almost as overtures. You know, it, it, it sets the tone for the whole record, you know. Ideally, you're giving people a little bit of what to expect from the whole album. Um, this is the thing is I care about albums still. You know, I feel like culture's kind of moved on from, you know, to streaming and things like that which is awesome too. There's interesting challenges and in artists there, but at the end of the day, I really still want to make an album. You know, that's, it's the, it's a whole art piece to me. And um, I wanted exactly what you said, you know, to, to kind of establish, kind of give people a hint of what to expect, I guess. 